Hey, how you doing? Um, how are you? Good. So my name is David Snyder. I'm with uh, the World Cup blog. It's usa.worldcupblog.org. Uh, and I appreciate you taking some time to talk to me this morning. Yeah, no worries. Um, so, you know, with the game coming up tomorrow, I wanted to start by asking what your thoughts were about it. Um, yeah, I think it, it lends itself to, uh, to being an open game. Um, there's really nothing to lose. And uh, I think both teams will get at each other a little bit, and then it's nice to see that they've, they've brought, you know, uh, both teams have brought first teamers. Yeah, they brought some first teamers into uh, camp, and they uh, they should, you know, it should be a nice open game. Are there any young players on the national team that you're particularly excited about? Well, the, the, the one guy that, that unfortunately is not here that I, I really really like is. Uh, Holden. Yeah, uh, I think he's carving out a nice career and a nice niche with the national team, and obviously a nice uh, a nice niche with Bolton. But unfortunately, he's hurt. I remember um, you know, a bunch of years ago, I was still living in Kansas City, when Dominic Clear called me uh, one day. And we were just chatting, and I asked him about the draft. He said, "You know, I got this this kid who I think is going to be really good," and um, and uh, sure enough. And he's, he's turned out to be just an exciting player. And, I, and of course, I, I, I kind of like the, the guys that, uh, you know, have imagination and try try things. I think well, that's why tomorrow night a game like this sets up well for, like, a Clint, Dem- Clint Dempsey, uh, you know, a land in the try and get a uh, You know, because, well, honestly, there's nothing to lose. Uh, but you will have some some guys that's they get an opportunity, like a Tim Reed and, and uh, an Aguadelo from New York. Uh, that will try to be trying to make a, a good impression on Bob Bradley. So we have a mixture, but I, I think the game will be wide open. Yeah, it's a, it's a real shame Holden can't play. It's been great watching him play for Bolton. I was really looking forward to seeing him play for the national team, but I guess yeah. we'll have to wait. Uh, uh, so I understand you're doing an appearance before the game? I am, yeah. I'm here with Ball State, and uh, we are uh, part of the process of that appearance that the All State fans are spoke about. Uh, that'll be prior to the game uh, outside the stadium. And, you know, I'll be signing autographs for a little while, but the, the big event there is this raffle that we're doing uh, that will uh, give, give the opportunity to some fans to take a tour with me uh, of the Metal Inn, the Metal Inn Stadium, uh, you know, down and, and take a tour that they wouldn't necessarily get otherwise. And, and then uh, one event I am doing today, and I'm excited about it, Headed out to uh, excuse me, surprise a team in New Jersey. Uh, we're going to show up to their practice, and uh, we're going to all take them out with uh, you know home and away uniforms and gear for their coaches, and coaching staff, and, and uh, which I think is uh, will be great, be a lot of fun, and it'll be a huge surprise for a bunch of kids. Yeah, it sounds pretty exciting. So, if fans want to take part in the appearance, where do they need to go? Yeah, tomorrow it's uh, between the West Gate and the Verizon Gate at, at the Metal Ends Arena. I'll be there. The experience is from 3 to 7, but I'll be there 4 to 6, and then uh, closer to 7 o'clock we'll do the raffle, and we'll escort uh, some lucky winners down to uh, down through the stadium and give them a little, a little tour. Sounds good. So I think you were a part of the U.S. national team, weren't you, that played Argentina in 1991? As a goalkeeper, how do you prepare for a big game like that? Well, you just you have to trust yourself. Uh, that you, you've done everything you could possibly do, uh, you know, to, to get yourself prepared. Now, the, keep in mind that the majority of these these guys are coming off. You know, they're, they're two thirds of the way done with their European seasons, and the MLS guys are, are should be should be very fit, uh, just coming out of preseason. So I don't. I don't think physically any of them will have any problems. Uh, you know, MLS guys probably won't be nearly as sharp as some of the European guys given the time of the year, uh, but physically they'll be fine and, and be able to make it through 
game. So, yeah, you have to just trust yourself. Uh, that's part of what athletes do. You put the preparation in, and, and uh, but this is the time to show how well you've prepared. Right, I want to go back. You had mentioned that 1991 game being historic for the men's national team. Do you feel like when you were playing in the 90s that it was a constant battle for respect? Well, it was until, uh, until um, the Columbia game in 1994, and I think that's when, when that completely changed. And I don't think from that point on anybody has come in and uh, taken the U.S. lightly uh, for any game. And, and you know, most teams didn't back, didn't back then, but I'm sure, you know, they looked on the schedule. Um, you know, that was a game they thought that they could just come to and walk through and, and uh, be done with it and go home. And that's not, uh, that's not the case anymore. And I think we've proven that time and time again. And, uh, and, and uh, I think that certainly uh, everybody knows that, that this team on any given day can beat anybody. Yeah, I seem to recall that after beating Spain or uh, actually, I think it was after they lost to Brazil. Their, Landon Donovan did an interview, and um, someone asked him if he felt that the team had finally earned some respect. I think he said it's no longer about respect; it's about winning. Well, excuse me. Yeah, you're you're an athlete. Uh, you know, you 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 have one mission when you get on the field, and that's to try and win a game. And uh, at the end of the day, if your if your opponent doesn't respect you, then um, hopefully they respect that you won. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just a, it's the constant battle, and you know, it was, it was guys earlier uh, that, that uh, you know carried the torch, and now it's Landon Donovan and it's Tim Howard and it's Dempsey, and and those guys are going to pave the way for for future guys. Um, you know, it, it's just the evolution of our game. We don't have the luxury of you know a hundred years uh, like some of the other sports do. Uh, we just got to keep continuing to build, build, build. So you're one of those you know, rare stars who came up when there was no MLS and made it to Europe and, and achieved for the national team. How do you think the existence of Major League Soccer has changed things for American players? Well, it gives you an opportunity uh, to play every day and to train every day where you don't have to search it out. Some of us, I mean, we had to go to Europe. We had to go to different leagues and play um, I think what MLS does is, is given us uh, a steady pace of, of uh, professional environment to play, and you know something that we we kind of didn't have for some years uh, prior to the '90 World Cup, and, and even a little time after that. So um, you know, I, I, I think it's and the other thing it's done if you look at the player pool. I mean, the player pool is so deep now. Uh, given the guys in Europe, you know, Bob Bradley probably, I uh, would think his list has to be 80 to 100 players deep of guys that he wants to see and he knows he wants to see right now. So that was never the case. I mean, there was a 30, a 30 you know, to 35 maybe player pool uh, back, uh, you know, 10, 10, 12 years ago. So from a, from a pure coaching standpoint, that's, that's a huge luxury to have. Um, you know, then the, the, the issue is when you find out how to make decisions, that's where that's what the coach can speak to you, and, and uh, you got to make all the tough decisions. It seems like a high-class problem, though, to have a lot of good players to choose from. Yeah, you know, and I, I think, you know, the, the, the problem is how do you uh, take the one or two special guys and, and put them into the system? Uh, you know, because you do have the depth feed, you do have the landings, you've got you know, now Stuart Holden is carving out a niche, and who knows how Abudel is going to turn out. And uh, we, we all assume it's going to be, you know, outstanding. But you got to let some of those things sort of progress. And, and uh, but, you know, it's, those are all those are all things that, uh, you know, again, those, those are, that's the coach's job to figure out. And Bob and his staff will do a great job of doing that. There's sort of a debate I've seen going on among fans of Major League Soccer as the league grows and the players get better, um, whether they should be holding on to talented players to improve the level of play in the league or letting them go over to Europe so they can improve their skills there. I mean, what, do you, what do you think about that? Well, uh, you know, 
you know, first, I think the league probably does a, a very good job of communicating with the players and saying um, what they what they want to do um, because it's it's not for everybody. I mean, look at Landon Donovan's case. Um, uh, you know, he, he's made a, a very conscious decision that you know LA is the place for him. Um, you know, so I'm sure I'm sure there's people out there that, that say, you know, you're crazy, you should be doing, you should be here. But I, I think this, all those decisions are are done. To, you know, the league has to make business decisions, and the players have to make uh, personal decisions, and they've got to they've got to do what's best for them. Um, no, no one solution. Um, is right for everybody, and no different than if you know two guys you know are going shopping for for soccer shoes. You know, they're, they're just not. Uh, you're generally not going to get uh, two of the same decisions. So uh, you, you've got both sides of the coin. I know everyone. The the perception is that you know go to Europe and, and everything is great, but the, the problem is the guys that do go to Europe and don't play. Now you're in a bigger dilemma. Yeah, will you make a little bit more money now? Absolutely. Will you have an opportunity uh, to play in a national team? No. And we saw that when, you know, like a Charlie Davies, you know, uh, was left out of the national team because he didn't have any playing time. Um, And that's the most important thing. Wherever you are, if you're going to be a national team player, you have to be playing. And all coaches, uh, you know, like Chris Arena did it, Tom Bradley had said it, you need to be playing at the club level in order to uh, in order to be successful with the group. What do you think U.S. soccer can do to develop more world-class American players? I think we are developing uh, world-class players, and we're seeing that. Um, we just have to the, the league continues to grow, the player pool continues to grow. You get you know we use the theory with young kids. When I coach, you get it's all the time you get better by playing with better players. And um, we are developing players. And I, I hear talk of uh, Clint Dempsey going to, to Liverpool, you know, and mm-hmm. Atlanta Donovan went, went over last year. But it's never, like, you know, when did those things ever happen to us? You know, it was, even if we could play, uh, we didn't have the opportunity. And now, because of the doors these guys are opening, um, they, they're, they're giving players behind them the opportunity I think much like you did and and John Harks and other players like that. Um, You you mentioned coaching, I think you coach your son's team? Yeah. Um, You know, I'm involved with youth soccer as well, and I see a lot of times parents on the sidelines yelling at the players and yelling at the refs. Um, I'm curious what you think about that and what advice you have for parents who are coaching or have kids in youth soccer. Well, when I I coach, there's only... uh... Yeah, I told parents before, there's only one guy that's allowed to give instruction to the players, and there's only one guy that's allowed to yell at the referee. And that's me, <laughs> because I'm the coach. I, I take all the responsibility. And, um, you know, the, the referee thing, it's always a tough, tough situation, um, for sure, uh, with parents. I think part of the problem with that. I've seen, you know, when I used to travel, I used to go watch youth games, and these referees are are, are beat up in some, and when I say beat up, I mean verbally beat up in some of these places, and it helps them as well as it helps players develop. Um, here, we're so protective of everything, and that's probably the way it should be, uh, but, but what does it do for the development? So when, it, when someone gets in a situation where there's a lot of pressure, you know, how do they really deal with all of that? Uh, from a parent standpoint, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I, I know, and I talked to Ted Ramos, I talked to other guys, Derek and all the coaches, we have a little bit of a luxury because at a minimum, the parents at least respect that, you know, you've been there before, and they respect your opinion and, and, um, and give you a little bit more leeway maybe than they would give other people, but yeah, I know it's a problem. Uh, I know you've got some other appointments, so I just have one last question for you. Yes. Um, you know, I just read that Jans Lehmann signed with Arsenal at the age of 41. Pat Onstep recently came back with DC United at the age of 42. Do <laughs> you ever think about coming back to MLS? I do. Um, I do think about it, and then, and then my wife will kick me in the backside. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you thinking? But I do think about it. I, I, um, 
I still play a little bit, and and I, I still feel at some level I was cut a little bit short uh, uh, here in New York, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for those guys. I think it's uh, it's great if you can play, play, um, and, and absolutely uh, hope those guys do well. Well, the fans would love to see you back on the field again if it were ever possible. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, all right, well, thank you for your time. I hope the event goes well tomorrow, and it was a pleasure yeah, talking to you. So much, All right, take care.